Hello, I'm Chase Lewis, and uh, the theme of the talk tonight is assembly required. That is, it's about taking any tools around us, any inspiration that we can find to stop waiting to take action and to do something. And I have been doing exactly that for the past couple years. You see, I'm an inventor. I've invented two life-saving technologies, and that might sound kind of incredible, right? But it's actually not. Inventing is human. It's simple. It's as simple as finding a problem, something that gives you a hard time, anything, and then looking, researching that problem, trying to find possible solutions, building those possible solutions, and testing them. That solution is an invention. And if you do the, just that, you solve a problem, you are an inventor. It's that simple. So my first problem was that during the Somali famine of 2011, hundreds of children were left by the roadsides to die. Now, why, why would their parents just leave them? Well, it turns out that the average African family has four children. And when those children can't walk two to three weeks across Africa without food and water, their parents have to make unfortunate decisions. And when I heard about that, I thought, that's awful. There's got to be something that can be done. And the deeper I looked, the more I realized that the issue was a dearth of wheeled transportation. Now, what do I mean by that? There is nothing over there in terms of wheeled transportation in comparison to what we have here. It's so bad that in order to transport the sick, weak, elderly, those in delivery distress from small rural villages to larger villages with doctors, people are often forced to drag people along on doors, or if they have it, which they often don't, a wheelbarrow. So if we could remedy that problem, the wheeled transportation deficit, we might just save some lives. But how would I do that? Well, as I thought about it, my mind wandered to the Travois, an invention of Native American Plains Indians, basically two poles from a teepee, crossed at a main vertex, and originally dragged behind a horse or a dog. I modified the Travois, updated it to the modern era, adding a cargo belt so it's hands-free, so you can carry a kid in your arms, kid swaddled to your back, a kid swaddled to your front, and of course, a cargo net so you can put your kids in the Travois. It also had a cross member in back so it was more structurally sound, and it had wheels, which is a whole lot more efficient than dragging something. Right, well, uh, in order to test the Travois, I brought it to a gathering of lo local homeschool parents and children, and I had the parents attempt to pull the travois, and I had the kids attempt to assemble the travois. And when they assembled it, they hadn't ever taken engineering courses or even assembled IKEA furniture. But they got it done in under 15 minutes, and if they could do that, so can the Africans, and that would have been great. But something better happened. A 60-pound girl carried 85 pounds of kids in the travois. That's more than her own body weight, and that would have been great. But it went one step further. She threw her arms up in the air and yelled, this is easy. I'm not sure if any clear indicator that the Travois works. Okay, yes. Um, the Travois ended up winning several competitions, including the uh, Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge and the Iron Man 3 Inventor and Innovator Fair. I got to meet Robert Downey Jr., which was cool. And, <laughs> yes, it was indeed. I also won the EPAL's Smithsonian Invent It Challenge, in which I got a all-expenses-paid patent application, which is absolutely great for a young inventor or an inventor of any age. But I didn't stop there. Remember when I said that there was a tremendous inability to transport the sick, weak, and elderly, those in delivery distress from small villages to larger villages of doctors? Yeah, that was still a problem. And I thought, if I take my idea, the Travois, and I make not a collapsible version, which is what the original one was, not the expensive version that was meant to be dropped on the sides of roads, but instead one that could be made in Africa by the Africans for the Africans. Well, that might make a real difference. So I designed a version of the Travois using, believe it or not, bamboo. Bamboo is very prolific in Africa and easily available. Now, it also uses simple, easily obtained materials, such as organic ropes, concrete, steel axles, and the most expensive part is a set of wheels. If this were actually made and sent over there, the idea is that it would hopefully just grow in an open source manner and could be assembled by pretty much anybody with even rudimentary machining 
experience. It could solve the issues of dragging people from small villages to larger villages. It could solve the issue of water transportation, that thing that takes up so much useful time over there. It could help in subsistence farming. Now, my second invention. The second issue was brought to my attention by an article I read in a newspaper about how a mother is forced to throw her infant out of the second story of a burning apartment building to a 10-year-old waiting below. Now, why would you throw a kid out of a window? Well, the room was filled with smoke, and the mother realized that her child was going to suffocate if she didn't get the child out. And the mother and the child survived, but this told me that we had a problem. You see, 40% of fire deaths are due to smoke inhalation alone. And ironically, you often have people sitting in the second stories of a burning building, waiting for firefighters to arrive and rescue them, but you have police, volunteers, volunteer firefighters, EMTs, waiting below, unable to help them. What if they could give those people inside more time to wait for the firefighters to arrive and rescue them? That's where the X-Caper smoke mask comes in, made by a company called X-Caper Industries. This smoke mask suited the issue perfectly. It's a little pouch, contains aloe vera and foam pellets and a bunch of other stuff, and it filters out the hydrogen cyanide, acrolyne, carbon monoxide, particulates, everything from the smoke. Now, that's great, but how do I get it up there? I'm a teenager. I love explosions, fire, and most of all, shooting things. So I thought, why don't I just shoot it up there? This will work out really well. So I brought it to the mascot of the Durham Bulls and had him fire his t-shirt cannon at windows for accuracy tests. Zero percent accuracy. <laughs> That's not so great. So I had him throw the same projectile and he had 48% accuracy, which is a little, little bit better than zero percent. So I decided to pursue some hand-thrown projectiles. Uh, the most successful of the projectiles was a little football-shaped canister, which I designed using a free 3D modeling program called Tinkercad, and uh, 3D printed on my MakerBot replicator to 3D printer. 3D printing is really cool, by the way. I recommend you look into it. I then tested my uh, projectiles uh, and had over 300 tests per projectile by over 35 firefighters, and they said they worked quite well, and they thought that this would be quite a useful application. Sorry, not application, invention. Pardon me. Um, really? Uh, <laughs> um, but that worked. And the football came out on top with an accuracy of over 75% at short ranges, about 15 to 25 feet. Now, this invention as well won the Smithsonian ePals Invent It Challenge, and I uh, just filed a patent application for that, and we'll see how that turns out. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Now, you're probably thinking, wow, I'm floored. <laughs> this kid's so awesome. Maybe I am, but that's not the point. You've been missing the point. The point here is that inventing is simple and human. You, 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 there's, there's gotta be a Steve in here. You too, Steve. Where's a Steve? Come on, Steve, raise your hand. No, okay. Well, the theoretical Steve could also invent. It's just a matter of finding a problem and looking for a solution to that problem. That's all it is, and it is innately human. Now, what am I gonna do about this, huh? I've got this idea, what am I gonna do? Well, I'd like to start a class called Inventing 101. This class would be administered to middle school students across America. And in Inventing 101, kids would be taught that one, inventing is simple and human, and it's actually pretty easy. Two, they'd be given examples of teen inventors, such as Jack Andraka, a science fair superstar, who have done exactly that. And finally, they'd be given the ability, they'd be facilitated in the development of small-scale inventions. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Chase, you're a loony. There is no way our kids have the time in their schedules for this. Their schools are chock full of other classes. Okay. My school district has a mythology elective. And I love mythology, absolutely love it, but it's about gods that were never real and stories that were never that real. Inventing 101 would be real. <laughs> See my point? Okay. Then there's the bureaucratic nightmare of moving the American education system. That's not so easy. It's like moving a mountain. 
Okay, but we can do that too. You see, Connecticut and Ohio are already doing exactly this. They have inventing curriculum in place, in effect, and if we follow those examples, we can become an inventing nation. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. Remember Jack Andraka, that guy I told you about a minute ago? Yeah, he told me to tell all of you that he agrees. <laughs> okay, there's going to be a little bit of assembly required. Just a little bit. Okay, a lot. But if we work together on this, we can make America a true invention nation, and people will realize that they can invent. Hang on, just a moment. Before I go, how many of you, raise your hands, think you are inventors? How many of you think you have the capacity to invent? Okay, okay, that's, that's some of you. Everybody, come on, you're not listening. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, that's good, very good. Inventing is only human. Thank you. 